Well, how are you today, Karen? I'm very well. How are you? Great. Thank you so much for the 15 minutes. I know you're probably incredibly sure. busy. No um, yeah, I wanted to ask you a little bit, you know, kind of about uh, vaccine estimates where we're at. Um, I know we just opened the, or we are opening the clinic in La Crosse on Tuesday. Um, as far as the rollouts going in general, is Wisconsin kind of on track as far as you were expecting? Are we behind, ahead? We are doing so well. So just yesterday, we crossed over that one millionth person vaccinated mark. So that's just a great milestone for us to have achieved as a state. In addition, when we think about some of our most vulnerable populations, we're now at a point where over 58% of people 65 and older have been vaccinated and approximately one in four of those people have received both doses of the vaccine and are considered fully immunized. So that's fantastic. We've got more than 1.5 million uh, doses of vaccine that have been given all across our state and more is coming into the state every day. So we're very excited to be turning the corner and having now that third vaccine available, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. We've had a great start this week with our educators and our childcare workers getting vaccinated. We have over 130 school districts that where the educators and staff will be fully vaccinated by mid-March. So okay. all the signs are really going in the right direction and between the great work of our team here at the state level and so many local government partners and private sector vaccinator partners in healthcare and pharmacies and public health all across the state, everyone is just doing a tremendous job. And when do you expect uh, shipments of the J&J &J vaccine might go out in the state? We are expecting to receive it and ship it out uh, early next week. So J&J &J vaccine will be administered across the state next week. And do you have any um, predicted timeline of when the next grouping might open um, after the, the educators and um, congregate living settings and food care or food um, industry workers? Yeah, we are really hopeful that we will be able to open to the next group of people sometime in April. That is a decision that is still being made. And so it's too soon really to give a firm deadline on that. We obviously recognize that it's really important for everybody who wants a vaccine to be able to get a vaccine. And at the same time, we have to manage the constraints that we have on our vaccine supply and make sure that we get to the, the groups that are currently eligible in large part because they have a, a high degree of vulnerability due to their exposure to the vaccine or their risk of exposure and their risk of being able to communicate it to other people. Okay. And so we want to allow just a little bit more time for a few more of those folks to get vaccinated and see what happens with our supply. And then just as soon as we can open to other groups, we absolutely will do that. Okay. And is there any kind of goal set or estimate set for when all of Wisconsin, um, those 18 and older, 17 or older, depending on the vaccine um, incarnation, will be able to receive it? Right, so we're doing some careful planning right now based on the information that we're receiving from the federal government about vaccine availability, right? So we have to keep looking at the projections that the federal government is giving us for how vaccine is gonna increase week over week. And then again, look at uh, the numbers of people who are currently eligible and are gonna become eligible in the future. I think it's, a, you know, it's certainly a reasonable projection that by the late spring or early summer, you know, that's certainly what you've been hearing this week from the president in terms of his projections of when people could expect to, that, that really we could open eligibility to all groups. And I think we believe in Wisconsin, we can be on that similar pace in terms of open eligibility. I think the thing to remember is that um, because vaccine supply is going to still be more limited than the capacity of our vaccinators to give vaccine, it will take some time for each newly eligible group to get vaccinated. So it took more than two months to get to, to make the progress that we have made with our initially eligible populations. It's going to take another maybe four to six weeks to vaccinate the majority of the groups that are currently eligible. So educators, childcare workers, food service workers, et cetera. 
So each group that we bring in, it's not that everybody is uh, eligible one day and vaccinated the next, right? It takes a period of time to work hundreds of thousands of people through the system. But that said, the, the news from the federal government about the gradual increase in supply and the, the stability of that supply, at least as of right now, looks really very good and very encouraging. And um, Mayo and Gunderson have on some weeks not received the amount of supply that they had requested. Do you see that as being a, a problem going forward and especially with the new um, community clinic opening, will they be getting even less doses? So here's a way to think about it. All across the state in a typical week, we receive requests from our vaccinators, including Mayo and Gunderson, for at this point, more than 400,000 doses. So what that means is all across our state, our vaccinator partners are capable of giving 400,000 shots in a given week. And if we could get them 400,000 doses, we absolutely would do that. But in a typical week, we get around 120,000 first doses that we're able to distribute. So it is literally a matter of math. We, what we end up needing to do in order to prioritize the most equitable um, distribution and access to vaccine is we are continuing to prioritize our federally qualified health centers, our free clinics and our charitable clinics and our tribal clinics to make sure that we meet 100% of those allocations because we know that communities of color and uh, non-white communities have been disproportionately affected by the virus itself. And we know that we have a network of providers that provides a lot of health care to those communities. Um, and then with every other request that we get, we have to look at county population and we look at the relative, what's called the social vulnerability index. So levels of poverty and, and um, housing instability and other factors in a given county. And we of course take population into account, if I didn't say that already. And then with all of that, we look at the number of vaccinators that are requesting vaccine in a county and we make a distribution on that basis. So it is, it's a complicated process. I am sure that it, it is challenging for our vaccinator partners who make a request and hope that they will get 100% of their request. But the reality of it is the vast majority of our vaccinators who make a request get between 25 and 30% of what they actually asked for. And that is purely a matter of supply and demand. As I said, it's just math. Sure. And um, how are you feeling about the, the numbers of cases? Obviously, we've been on a downward trend now since um, December or so. Are you thinking that a lot of this is due to people being vaccinated? Or do you think that people are kind of finally getting into the groove of masking and distancing? Or what would you credit to these drops in numbers? Yeah, I appreciate the way you asked that question. It, I think it, the answer is it's multiple factors. So certainly as we have increasing amounts of vaccination happening, that is a contributor to the decline in cases. Maybe the best way to see that is in our skilled nursing facilities and our long -term, other long-term care facilities where we have seen new cases just absolutely plummet particularly since we began um, the vaccine campaign in those settings. So that is just great news. I think that for the state overall, we definitely are seeing that, as you say, people have gotten in a groove, they're accustomed to wearing a mask, they've limited their social circle, they're limiting the kind of activities that they're engaging in outside their homes. No one is happy about that, but I think everybody understands that this is a part of what we have to continue to do in order to keep the case counts low. Um, so I think, I think those things are positive. Um, one thing that we are concerned about though, is we are not seeing as many people choosing to get tested for COVID anymore, as was the case at kind of the height of our testing. And I think it's really important to underscore for people that if they are feeling symptomatic, if they have one of that long list of COVID symptoms, if, they're, if they've been exposed to somebody who's had COVID, it's still really important to get tested um, because that helps us track what the true picture is of the spread of the virus across our state. And it also helps us identify those new, more contagious variants that are out there. 
and we know that that they're in our state uh, and spreading and so we know that we need to be able to have more people getting tested so that we can do more genomic sequencing find the new variants and stay ahead of these new more contagious variations of the virus and you know kind of in in the opposite respect um obviously then there might be some concern about people getting lax in um, their precautions given that more people are vaccinated and you know some of the other states um, are you know dropping their mask mandates and things like that yeah. um, what would you reiterate to people that you know even though it's it's summer and people are getting vaccinated and other states may be changing the rules a little bit that we really need to continue on track here in wisconsin Right. I think what's important for people to know is we are so close to being able to feel like we really have gotten to a good level of protection for people all across our state with the vaccine, but we're not there yet. So again, we have vaccinated a million people, but not all of those million people have had both doses, so they wouldn't all be considered fully protected. And there are 5.7 million people who live in our state, about and it's about a four and a half million or so adults who are going to be eligible to be vaccinated. So a million is fantastic progress and we're not halfway there yet, right? Um, so I think it is really important for people to think about the next couple of months as a time to stay the course, to really focus on the fact that the picture is getting brighter and brighter and more and more encouraging, but we have to continue to take those good preventive and good um, public health precautionary measures that we have been doing for so long, which as you noted, are bringing our case counts down, helping us control the spread of the virus and save lives while we work to get shots in arms just as fast as we can. And then my last question is regarding um, back to school in the fall. Um, it doesn't seem like children will be vaccinated by then, given that they're just now conducting those trials on the uh, tween to teen range. Are there any concerns about, um, you know, a full reopen to classes if children are not vaccinated? So there, I think the good news is that the CDC is giving really good guidance to schools about how to open and stay open safely. There are some just basic preventive steps that and precautionary steps that schools need to be taking. We're going to, as we see more and more schools that are opening to more and more kids for more and more time this spring, we're going to have a very good sense of what we need to do to be able to help schools stay open as fully as they can be as safely as they can be. And obviously, Governor Evers is very committed to making sure that kids are back in school and learning and that educators and staff are safe. And that's one of the main reasons we've prioritized educators and child care workers both in this next phase of the vaccine. And then with that, Emily, we're out of time. Okay. All right. But thank you so much. And uh, we look forward to seeing your story. All right. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jen. Let me know if you have any follow-ups. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.